Welcome here to the webinar. I'm Deborah Spiegel, CEO and Director of the Spiegel Academy for Music Therapy Continuing Education. We help music therapists and allied health professionals to be effective and make a difference. I'm here today with Sally Boncrude, who is a board certified music therapist, as well as a psychotherapist. Sally teaches a class for the Spiegel Academy called Music Therapy with Kids and Teens. And we're lucky today to have Sally with us to share with you three powerful strategies to deal with challenging kids and teens in your music therapy practice. So take it away, Sally. Okay, so number one issue oftentimes is what do you do with teens that don't want to engage? I can't tell you how many teenagers I've had that have come in, you know, like this and like, they're not gonna talk, they're just not gonna talk. And so to me, the best, the thing that's worked the best is not to push, not to push at all. And basically to give them options. It's like, you know, I'm fine with just sitting. I remember a client I had that we did, we spent one whole hour not saying a word. And later she was an, as an adult, she called me back and she said, you know why I'm calling you? She said, cause you'd never left me and you didn't, you know, you stayed with me. And so the power behind that is I was there for her and it doesn't necessarily have to be in language. The beautiful thing about me being music therapist, you're oftentimes able to use the music as kind of a, a way in because you don't have to use those words and say those hard things that really just don't want to be said, but it can all come out, out and be held in the music. Some of the tips that I'm going to give you today is that I found successful working with teens is actually going for a walk. <laughs> Instead of sitting in my office, it's like, let's just go for a little walk. And where my office was, I, there was a river, and I used to walk along the river with the kids, and we'd, we'd talk. There they would talk. So it is building that relationship, whether it's in silence, whether it's on a walk, whether it's maybe making some instruments together, sharing favorite songs letting silence be okay, really trusting your intuition to know what needs to happen in that one moment. And then it's, it's building relationships through playing. I can remember a client that I had where we actually, he was terrified of animals in the woods and he would like cry when they'd go on walks. And so we went out <laughs> in the woods, of course. And it was like, we were looking, we were looking for all kinds of musical sounds. It's like, oh, the wind, all the, you know, all these different sounds we could have with our feet and the, um, the different kinds of um, rocks and different things we were on. And so it was just exploring, building that relationship through listening to the musical sounds and then coming back and being able to create some of that same energy using the instruments in my office. Ah, so number two, are we on to number two, Deborah? I don't know, I'm still thinking about teens. Something that I did that worked a lot was to have them choose a song that meant something to them or mm. somehow about them and then they would open up afterwards and explain why the lyrics to that song related to them so yes that worked excellent right on yeah yeah it, it really is about building relationship and trust and we all can have, you know, totally different ways of doing that. But knowing that unless we do that, we're not going to move forward. Exactly. So the benefits of yeah. drumming. What else? Social skills, mm -hmm. um, relaxation. Right, right. So I'm going to move to the next slide and you can see... Here are some other ideas. You guys have got, you know, you're right on the right track here. To me, the biggest thing about grounding, about drumming, is it really grounds the student, kids, kids and um, teens. And it's just that so it's regulating the inner rhythms. And if their pulse is really fast, it's like we can bring it down. We can tone, we can tone it down. We can speed it up with, I've worked with a lot of kids with depression and it's like their beat is so slow and if one can begin to encourage them to pick it up a little bit, it just changes their whole energy. So grounding is really important. It helps develop creative expression. Uh, it's used as a tool to quiet your inner voices. You know, we talk about meditation and 
and with a three-year-old it's like we're not exactly that's a little hard to do but if we can get a, a very young child to really focus on the beat can you hear the beat can you stay with the beat stay with it then they too can experience that sense of meditation and begin to quiet those inner voices and number four it helps to unlock emotional blocks. I don't know how many of you have ever had like that cathartic experience where they're just drumming like crazy, drumming like crazy until they're to the point of exhaustion. And then they feel complete. Oftentimes in working with kids that really have um, anger issues, and I actually use cardboard boxes so they can really kind of destroy it. And then we talk about what is it that they release there. And then we can begin to work with a regular drum. Number five, helps to improve self-esteem. Sometimes I like to teach a little bit about different techniques on drumming because, again, it gives them a sense of power that they can create all these different sounds. And also just being able to connect with you and make interesting rhythms and beats, I think it gives them a sense of, you know, can do, particularly with teenagers. Okay, so what do you do if a kid has a lot of anxiety? One of the things I like to do is just have them play the anxiety. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, what would it sound like if there wasn't as much anxiety? What would that be like? And can you play that for me? So it's, it's kind of like exploring exactly where they are and letting that be okay. Letting that be, that anxiety in a way be heard. Also dancing it. Like, can we dance the anxiety? Can we play the anxiety? And then it's like practicing sending the breath to the anxiety is a way just to release it and relax. It's like, ah, yeah. So kids don't know that word. So how do they display it? How do they, they don't even know they have anxiety. Good, qu good question. What do we do? How do, what do we call it? And, and sometimes it's like, you know, it's, it's, I'm sensing that, that you might not be happy with this. It's like, so you're feeling something inside, kind of having them do their own exploration. And frankly, if you didn't name it at all and just said, uh, show me with your body how you feel inside. Or show me with your hands how, how you feel. Does it feel like this inside? Or does it feel like this inside? Or does it feel like, you know, tied up like this inside? So that would be one way to do it. It's kind of noticing how the child is is reacting as as far as what what skill set they they're most comfortable with. Is it their words? Is it using mu musical sounds or movement or uh, and kind of going with that? So how would you do it without talking? Like, what if it was a really shy kid? Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk to you at all. I breathe. And sometimes it's just like, oh, yeah, just kind of demonstrating, releasing the tension in the body. And then it's possibly adding some musical sounds with that. Mm -hmm. Even like right now, I'm just, I'm, I'm doing this on my knees. You can't see it on the video, but it's like, I'm just kind of um, rubbing where my knees are. Like, mm -hmm. It's kind of moving into the body. Yeah. Can be tricky, but I, then using body percussion too is just playing with that. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes kids have trauma. Do you ever um, just have them play it out instead of like show you, but maybe play it out? Absolutely. Oftentimes. Mm hmm. Yep. And yet, you know, they can dance it, they, they can move it, they can play it, they can, um, we can play it together. Do you want me to join you? Might be in a question. Would you like me to play with you or do you, would you like me to listen? I always ask permission before I jump in to play with any client that I have. Mm -hmm. Because it's important that, again, that they're in charge here. So then do you find that they're playing like the anxiety kind of vibe for a while and then they calm down with their playing? If, if they don't, I bring them down. Mm -hmm. I bring them down with the breath. You know, I'd probably start 
doing that with them, it's like, okay, can we slow it down? Mm-hmm. What would that feel like if we slow it down a little bit? And probably I would go with, you know, what, what would that feel like if we slow it down? Let's, tr- let's try that. Mm-hmm. Explore that. So I'm not, again, directing to them <laughs> what to do, because that just brings on more anxiety usually. Right. So bringing awareness to it, which is something I do a lot, it's like, notice, what does it feel like to be doing that? And now, what does it feel like that you're breathing and slowing down? Right, like, exactly. Describe it as much as I can, or just be aware. Yeah. yeah. And if they're not very verbal, have them draw it. Ooh. Yeah. Good. Also, with anxiety, if you have a sand tray, uh, sandbox is even better, but using something like that, there's nothing in my mind more soothing than running your hands through sand mm-hmm. and letting, picking up the sand and letting it float down. So sand tray, sand in general is, is great. Sandbox, whatever. <laughs> my office, one time I, I had um, a mother that had come to me, had two young daughters and the mother had just lost a baby and she was grieving terribly and she didn't know what to do and she came to me really for that reason but she also said you know her family was a mess and she wasn't very clear as to what was going on with the family or what was happening and so I thought you know I need to get a feeling or sense of what's happening so I had her bring her kids her two children and one was I believe like 12 and the other one was nine and then her husband so they came into my office the husband immediately sat in the corner the furthest away from me and put his uh, folded his arms and just made no eye contact he just i think he said hello and then that was about it and he shut down then i said i put the gathering drum in the middle of the floor, and I asked the mother, I said, I'd like you all to gather around the, the gathering drum, and we're going to play together. And you can play anything that you like, and there are no, there's no possibility for mistakes. Whatever you do. So it, again, does the dad move? No. Nope. <laughs> He's in the chair, <laughs> arms folded. And the mother begins to move down, and the other teenager is holding back, and the youngest daughter says come on everybody come on she wants to play the drum and she's like with her hands <laughs> trying to bring them all over to the drum so she sits over by the drum and the mother kind of says you know I'm coming I'm coming and the mother sits over by the drum and slowly the the teenage daughter kind of comes over to the drum so now I have the three the two daughters and mom around the gathering drum dad still in the corner And nobody plays. (laughs) And the youngest again says, but aren't we going to play? And and again, I'm saying nothing because I'm just looking at what the family dynamic is. I want to know what's going on in the home. And this is giving me a window into who's in charge. (laughs) And it's definitely not mom and it's definitely not dad. And this young little one is feeling like she has to hold the whole group together and it's falling apart. And as I looked at that family dynamic, as much as I knew the mother was in grief and definitely needed help, this little one that was trying to hold everything together, even though she seemed to be the most mm, healthy, she was also carrying a huge weight So it's called Music Therapy with Kids and Teens, and it's jam-packed with content. Um, It'll get your creative juices flowing for sure, and it's worth 10 credits. So it says here that you will begin by learning how to use drumming to understand family dynamics. You want to say something about that, Sally? Oh, 
I love this because it's it's so interesting. I've I've had like the parents and the Andy uh, siblings come in and they each get to choose a drum, and it's so interesting to see who takes charge. I've had like a five year old take charge where the dad is like this, not wanting to do anything, and the mother's like trying to coach, you know, dad into coming. It's like. What, what's the problem here? Is it the child? <laughs> I mean, there, you get the whole family dynamic simply by watching who leads, who leads, who sits back, who's scared, who's in charge. Cool. And when the child is in charge in a family, something major is going on here that's not so good. Oh, I want to learn right? how to do that. Good idea. Yeah, and then you practice having other people take charge. What's it like if dad took charge? What's mm -hmm. it like if mom took charge? And you're doing it all through rhythm. So there doesn't have to be the whole communication talking about things, which is a good way to start. Yeah. And so they're practicing all these communication skills through the drumming without having to go into difficult dialogue. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And you use songwriting for self-expression and empowerment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And again, depending on the age, you're going to do that slightly different, differently. It's fun to do that, again, if you're working with a family, to have them write the words together and then put it even the, the harmony, or not the harmony, the musical part together, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, we go into a lot of this in the, in the webinar, but it, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, whether somebody's in depression. I remember working with someone that was really depressed to the point that there was no, there was no speech for many sessions. And sometimes it's just simply laying the hand on the drum and just rubbing the drum head. I remember a client I had that would never speak and I didn't do any music. But years later, as an adult, she calls me back and she says, I want you to know how much that meant to me. And I'm like, I thought like I was the worst therapist ever in the world. And she said, because you didn't leave me. Exactly. You didn't leave me. There's nothing wrong with silence so long as we're able to be present with the client. If they're not wanting to, to talk, to make music, it's can we still be present from a place of love? And that's key. It doesn't have to look a certain way. I know I want it to look a certain way sometimes, but I have to ask that part of myself to step back and stop trying to control and let things happen naturally. If you sign up right away within the next 24 hours, we're going to give you 10% discount on the Music Therapy with Kids and Teens class. So yes, I would love to have you all come to my class and we could talk about all kinds of things and we could all share ideas and be great fun.